Okay, so it's time to start. Hi everyone, I am Gonzalo Fernandez from MemoQ's marketing team and I would like to welcome you to a new edition of MemoQ webinars. Today we will be delivering a joint session with our long-term machine translation partner, Sistran. Our presenters are Lucas Rechter, a sales manager at MemoQ, and Julien Pirot, consulting manager at Sistran. So that's basically it from my side. I will now give the floor to Lucas. Hello everyone, I hope you can hear me well. Uh, let me jump to the first the first slide and give you a brief overview of what we've pre prepared for this presentation today. So I will start with introducing you to the MemoQ and MemoQ server environment in the, in the first couple of slides and then I will hand over the floor to our guest to talk about Sistron and what I would like to start with is uh, talking a little, bit, a little bit about what's MemoQ. I know that we have a lot of MemoQ users around to register for this presentation, but uh, there are still some people who may be new to the, to the, new, to the system, so I'll just spend a couple of seconds introducing you to, to the basics, and then I'll talk some more about how MemoQ can be integrated with other systems. So let's start. Uh, MemoQ is a translation environment tool, and it means that it allows you to control your entire workflow, uh, translation workflow. Uh, it features the most important translation resources, such as translation memories and term bases, but it also introduces new concepts such as live docs or muses, uh, which can help you organize your work even better. MemoQ also uh, features a lot of mechanisms to help you utilize all of these resources when you work in the translation grid as a translator. But if you wanted to work in a project, MemoQ Server will be the tool you should choose. MemoQ Server is a collaboration platform. Uh, it can be used by various teams. It can be used by translation agencies, but also translation departments and individuals who would like to work together. And MemoQ Server, uh, as a collaboration platform, it offer, offers you a lot of, a lot of nice features and a lot of extensions to the classic MemoQ client. So first of all, it offers you one place for your translation resources. It means that you can store everything you have in one place, and when you update it, everybody get access to the updated versions. Uh, it means also that you can store all your settings on the server. So if you need to change your QA settings or segmentation rules, there's only one, one place uh, for everybody to go to. Also, MemoQ server can be used to and also to rent them to your translators for the given projects. Apart from this, MemoQ as a collaboration platform offers you to offer your translators to work together with reviewers one after another with a, let's say, classic approach to projects. However, it, it's also possible for them to work on the, on the document at the same time, which means that if you want to save some time translating, you can allow the reviewer to start reviewing the document while the translation is still in progress. It also means that you can split documents for several translators to work on them at the same time. They will be able to translate their parts only, but they will share the same resources and also they will be able to communicate uh, with each other and they will see live updates of the other parts as they translate. And this is all meant to save a lot of time and allow you to deliver your projects faster if, it, if it's workflow automation. And it's very important to know that MemoQ offers a lot of built-in automation options. One of them uh, is delivered through templates. So in templates, you can, you can already uh, tell MemoQ to create projects based on different criteria and create new transition memories or assign new transition memories based on the client or based on the domain or based on any other specific requirements. Also, it is possible to automate some more to tell MemoQ to export files, to do pre-translation, maybe to re-import documents or to even run QA automatically. So templates are very powerful for automation. It is also possible to plug in other systems and maybe integrate some other functionalities coming from external tools, and we'll talk about it in more details in a while. 
Uh, but let's talk about the last point. Uh, the client and the web uh, in can be both operated through the client, which is installed on your computers, but it can be also accessed through the web interface, and it works both in terms of the project management functionality and also for translator uh, translation uh, access as well as revision. Uh, that's that's not all. It is also possible to have your MemoQ server deployed in two different ways. You can use our cloud environment, which is the easiest way to start with, with smaller instances. But also, if you have more restrictions, if you want to apply some more settings to the, to the environment, you can have it on-premise and built within your internal network. So that's also an option. Looking at, uh, looking at the MemoQ, MemoQ system. You can see that MemoQ server can be used with the MemoQ Translator Pro. Uh, that's the typical. If you want to release the full potential of the tool, uh, you can use it as a center of the augmented translation environment. What it means is that MemoQ can be, well, can use various extension points and interfaces such as SDKs or APIs to connect additional systems, plugins, or extensions uh, to make them work together as one system. This is a snapshot, like an overview snapshot of what's possible. But now I would like to focus your attention to talk a little bit uh, about some deep, <laughs> deep integrations and some more specific cases on the next slide. So ho hold on tight. So this is what we call the MemoQ server universe. Uh, as you can see, MemoQ server is put here in the middle of this of this environment, and we have several places, several groups of connected systems that we can we can define and we can talk. Sorry for what we mean here, and let's start from the from the right hand side. So let's look at the MemoQ web. So as you can see here, this is the part when you can connect to your MemoQ server through the web browser, and it is in this browser we already offer you the the project manager, project manager functionality, and also the web trans for translating inside of the web browser. But also the web, uh, the web extension offers you the possibility to share terminology with other team members or other colleagues in the company or outside of the company. And this is operated through Qterm. Also, we've already created something called customer portal, which is again an extension that allows you to, to offer your clients uh, and we can mean internal clients or, or external clients. We can offer them access to your, to your server and submit projects or, or requests for quotes through this customer portal. So I would like to focus on is the APIs. So the API, we have three different API uh, extensions. One is the web service API, and it's been present in MemoQ for the longest time. And through this interface, we are able to connect uh, business management systems or translation management systems, such as Plunet or XTRF or any other custom system that you would like to connect to MemoQ. Also, we feature resources API, and this allows us to connect other capitals to our MemoQ server. And we've already created several plugins, such as the SDL plugin for Trader Studio, so it means that Travel Studio can actually look up uh, transition memory results from MemoQ server. And the third type of the API is the newest uh, invention of ours. It's called the CMS API. And this, this is an interface that allows any content management system uh, with MemoQ. WordPress is our fir first uh, integration that is built around this interface. However, we are already able to connect any external CMS systems with MemoQ server using this interface. Last but not least, we have the SDKs. And SDKs are used if you wanted to, to allow MemoQ server and MemoQ to look up re results or resources out coming from outside of MemoQ. And in this group, we have different, we have different extension points. First one is called the translation memory. So we are, we are able to build translation memory plugins to, to MemoQ. And in this way, we can look up results coming from outside, inside of your translation results. 
Uh, the same applies for term-based. So we do have term-based plugins uh, already built in. The same principle applies to quality assurance plugins. This is something we do on uh, upon request. So we have some custom built quality assurance plugins aimed at companies who want some more functionality uh, above what we offer in built uh, in the quality assurance in MemoQ. And the last point is the machine translation plugins, which, which allows us to, to connect to external machine translation sources, such as Cistron, for example. So when it comes to machine translation plugins, we have different, different vendors, different systems already integrated. Cistron is, uh, is one of our longest um, partner. We've been integrated with Cistron for, since 2012. We offer uh, also additional system integrations, um, starting from Google, through Bing, and other, uh, and other uh, names you can see. However, with Cistron, uh, we've been releasing a new update to the plugin. So the plugin uh, features the, the newest release of Systrans machine translation. And this is already applied in the newest build of MemoQ. So if you wanted to use this one, you, you can already download it and start using it. And we thought that this is a great opportunity for us to invite our guest presenter to today and ask them to talk about what they've prepared in Systrans recently, what, what's been the newest development when it comes to machine translation and Systrans engine. So if I can ask my co-presenter to unmute himself. Thank you, uh, uh, Lukash. Um, the, first, um, um, a quick slide uh, about Systrans and who we are. Uh, Systrans is a software vendor, and we provide natural language processing solution. Um, we are focused mainly on machine translation, or MT. So when I say MT, it's machine translation. And what is empty is just to, to perform translation in real time and using a computer. Of course, a computer can be a, a, a server. And why um, use empty? Um, maybe first to enhance multilingual communication in your company and that for all your employees. But also to increase productivity uh, of your translators, of course, using MemoQ platform. And for big data crawling, like e-discovery, for content management, but also for customer support um, to, to speak the language of your customer and for e-commerce, etc. You have many, many, many use cases where you can use MT. Here at Cistron, we are covering more than 140 uh, languages. It's quite a lot. Uh, it's probably 95% of the languages uh, you need, or maybe 100%. We are visiting a lot in R&D, and we have partnership with large university uh, and labs. As you can see in my slide, um, we have partnership with Harvard University. We are working together on OpenNMT. And this allows us to provide a cutting edge technology, and we're gonna see details later. And on the right of the slide, you can see some of our customers, like industries, automotive industries, um, but bank and finance companies, language service providers, and also a lot of defense and security agencies. Next slide, please. Thank you. And in this slide, this is um, our solution in a nutshell. This is a Cistron server. On the top right of the slide, um, you have the best of breeds in terms of machine translation. And within the same solution, you can use all the um, type of engines available on the market, from the old rule-based uh, machine translation uh, engine to the latest neural machine translation engine. And the latest neural use neural networks, of course, and it's based on deep learning, artificial intelligence, etc. Everything that is cutting edge and provides very, very good results. At the middle of the slide, you can see the connectors, and you can seamlessly interact with MemoQ platform, of course, in few clicks. But also we provide API, so if you want to connect your CRM, if you want to connect your customer support tool, we can do that in, in, in few clicks. On the left, you have at the top the custom resources, so you can embed your linguistic assets within the solution 
to um, increase the translation quality. And for your end users, top uh, bottom left, sorry, uh, you have the user tools. This allows all your users to, um, to connect to the uh, machine translation system via web portal, for instance, it's like a Google Translate, but secure and accurate. Uh, but also, uh, you can interact with um, all the Office tools like Word and Translate within your Word document, Translate within Outlook, Translate within PowerPoint, and what is quite nice, Translate uh, within Skype. So when you are chatting with your Chinese colleague, you can have uh, everything translated in real time. Of course, the solution is secured. Um, we provide on-premises installation. On-premises means that basically you can have behind your firewall um, um, your neural network working for translation. The solution is also highly available and scalable. This is two words that provide everything if you want to work with big data. If you have a lot of data to process, ERT Strong we are able and we do that every day. Next slide, please. I want to focus on very specific um, item that is specialization. Um, specialization provides um, the ability to um, customize the neural network and make it your very own neural network. So you're going to have your very own MT, neural MT engine just for you and um, very accurate within your domain. And for that, this is at the top of the slide, how we proceed. Um, we at Systrom provide a generic neural engine. And on your side, you provide your corpus. Corpus is a set of data, a set of sentences you have, and uh, dictionaries. Then we mix everything within a, a GPU-powered training server, and we retrain the engine. We optimize the neural network. We make it more fluent and more accurate. So it allows you to have very in-demand translations. Of course, it takes some time. It's a matter of hours. But the, the more time we have, um, the better um, is the quality. And we have some results uh, at the bottom right of the slide. And um, as we are challenged by um, a big company like, like Google and, and uh, other like, like Deeper, as you can see, after specialization, this is something we have done two months ago. Um, we have a blue score. Blue score is, is a way to, to calculate the, the translation accuracy. So that is quite high compared to other systems. And everything can be done on premises. It's quite important. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, this last slide is just to um, have um, an overview of a, a case study for a pharmaceutical company. Um, this company has many challenges, and among these, um, improve the multilingual communication between the employees. It was quite important for a company with um, 20 facilities in more than 10 countries. But everything had to stay secured um, as they were translating very um, private data. And the solution was to um, integrate uh, MemoQ, they already had MemoQ, so we had the integration of MemoQ. And um, everything was installed on premises. They were using more than 25 uh, languages. And some of the uh, language pair were uh, specialized um, on site, meaning they have all, they have everything to, um, to perform training outside, on site. And the benefits for um, the customer was um, yeah, a, a very seamless integration uh, thanks to the partnership with uh, MemoQ. And of course, a large productivity gain for the translator and the reviewers. It's more than two digit uh, ROI uh, for the first year. Um, and um, a very close integration of the solution within all the application and within all the ecosystem of, of this company. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Um, we thought maybe we can show you um, how or where actually you can integrate your machine translation engines into MemoQ. So um, my colleague Lucas Flechter will actually uh, show you this now. 
And, um, and well, and if you have questions, any other, please let us know through the question panel and we can answer them right away. Okay, cool. So uh, let, let me maybe, yeah, this is the safest way. So this is the MemoQ, MemoQ screen and what we can show you uh, still today is how mem machine translation was integrated inside of MemoQ. And this is, I think, really interesting because uh, recently we've changed the way it's, it's behaving inside of MemoQ. So what you can see here is the resource console. This is the place where all the resources are stored and managed uh, inside of MemoQ and MemoQ server. Uh, cloud servers. So this is the server URL on the top. And you can see all the available translation memories, term bases, and other resources. So uh, up until MemoQ version 8. Uh, I'm not sure if two or three, but one of those versions. Um, machine translation plugins were stored inside of the MemoQ client. Uh, however, recently we, we made them appear as the server level uh, resource, and you can see them uh, as the empty settings on the bottom of, the, of this view. So when you go here uh, in your MemoQ resource console, you will see a different settings for machine translation. And if you, if you have a look at these, you will see that there are local settings and there are also server-based settings. So if you would like to set up your machine translation machine engine provider, you need to go and edit one of those settings. Uh, let me try to do it. I have some old and new settings, so let's see which one works. Okay, I have a screen displayed here. So as you can see, here I have different plugins already uh, introduced here by MemoQ. The, the one I'm actually using with these settings is called pseudo translation, which is not a real machine translation. Uh, however, you can see that below we have other providers and Sistron, of course, is, uh, is also on the list. So if you wanted to configure one of them, you just click on this knob icon to configure plugin, and then you need to put your credentials. Uh, let's see if it's pop up, yeah. So you can see that you have a window when you can choose the API version of Sistron. It can be seven or eight. And then you configure your credentials and logins to your, to your machine translation. What's interesting is that once you configure the connection, you can use this machine translation both for your translation to, to be applied automatically and be usable by your translators. So you can set up for all of your translators and they wouldn't need to configure anything. Everything will be set up in the project. Uh, yeah, so I hope this clarifies this a little bit. Okay, thank you, Lukas. We actually have a couple of questions now, so let me raise them. Uh, we have one from Helen Thompson. Uh, the question was, if the Sistream plugin, one second, can connect with our TMs in MemoQ and whether the content can remain private. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's, if it's, if my answer is accurate here, but uh, when you, when you're using machine translation plugins in MemoQ, you will get the machine translation results coming in the same window as translation memory results. So they appear in a similar way. Uh, if I understand, if you, if, well, if the question meant, meant something else. So if you can train machine translation, system machine translation with MemoQ translation memories, I would also answer yes. But the second part, I think, Julian, you may know more about this. And uh, if I can, uh, um, I can feel that you can, of course, train um, the machine translation with um, um, your TM, um, of course, and you can also load all your TM within uh, Cistron to have it directly available via machine translation. So you have every option. Okay. And there was a part about privacy, right, as well? Yes, this, that was the second part. So basically, the question was whether you can connect Cistron to the TM, but I guess there you answered that. So the results come from the machine translation engine, and then if you actually confirm them, they would go into the TM. And then the second part of the question is whether the content can remain private. That's not very clear 
maybe we can ask, we can give the floor to Ellen if she wants to further. Uh, I can answer on this on side. Yes, you are, your content can be private, as you can say, you can set um, um, rights rules uh, according to profiles for MT provided by by um, by Sistron. So I would say yes. Yeah. And as Sistron is also available on premises, I mean, there's no privacy issue. Okay, thank you very much. There, there is another question. So the next question says, uh, is it possible to define the range of match to apply uh, for the MT? Let's say no matches and low FASI only and keep high FASIs from memory. Okay, from MemoQ, from MemoQ perspective, there is no such concept simply because uh, there is nothing like fuzzy match when it comes to machine translation. At least as far as I understand, because machine translation will, will always try to give you the, the, the full translation of the segment. So there is no fuzzy matches there. And from this perspective, the only setting is uh, to tell MemoQ to apply translation memory results uh, if it's there uh, based on the, on the uh, minimum match value and apply tr machine translation if, if the TM match is missing. Okay, thank you. I'm not exactly sure how it works with Sistron. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's such a mechanism. Julian, you can just confirm if I'm right. It's it, it, right, it, you, your answer is perfect. Thank you, Kash. Okay, this question, I guess it's for you, Julian. He says, uh, it's Thomas. He says he's already working with Sistron, but he's not able to use it with regional languages such as English, US, or Portuguese in Brazil. And whether there will be a time when Sistrin actually is available for, for these kind of language pairs or sub-languages. Um, in, in any case, you can uh, specialize your um, um, neural machine translation engine. So you, you can uh, adapt to, uh, to, to, to whatever you want. So if you need uh, American English, you can have it via specialization. Okay. There is another question uh, that says, can I leverage rights and permissions to project users and groups? Yeah, on the MD side, of course, you, you have a lot of rights uh, and permission you can set to, um, of course, um, translation engines, but also your uh, linguistic assets loaded uh, within Sistron. Okay, and there is one more question. And I think the same applies for MemoQ. Uh, so you can you can set permissions to machine translation uh, resources uh, inside of MemoQ as well. I'm just displaying this just to clarify. Then this question says if the MT engine will learn as I translate. Um, yes, we have. Um, um, the project of um, uh, infinite training that uh, we um, uh, we send all the um, all the translated validated sentences um, within the neural network to make it learn. So yes, thanks to the feature that is called infinite training. Okay, and there is one more related to the MT engine as well, and it's whether it supports Arabic. Of course, of course. And you have different dialects uh, of Arabic, of course. Okay. Um, I will ask two more questions. There are quite a few coming in lately. The, there is one that says whether Sistrin server is using open MT standard. Um, yes, it is. Um, uh, open MT has been built with uh, Harvard University. Um, and we are working together to uh, uh, to improve this technology. And there are very a lot of new features coming, and a lot of fun is happening on on NMT. Okay, and then there is a very interesting question that it's regarding to um, the general data protection regulation, which is uh, going to come live on the 25th of May. And how does the MT engine complies with these new a regulation? Um, of course, and for uh, many reasons. Um, first, related to security that um, we provide 
everything on premises. So you can apply all your IT security rules and policies. And second point that we do not keep um, data within the system. Um, so there is no personal data stored uh, within the translation engine and uh, stored while translating um, any content. So of course, yes. Okay, I think um, the most important and relevant questions have been answered. Uh, I would like to thank again Lukas and Julian for the for the presentation and uh, well, also to you guys for sharing this webinar with us. Thank you. Thank you very much.